Hello all, welcome back. In this video we are going to look at lesson 3 of the second module and we are going to look at virtual machine availability. We look at the overview of this module. We will start looking at what is the difference between maintenance and a downtime and what are availability sets and how are we going to use update and fault domains and what are scale sets and how can we implement scale sets and then auto scaling and its implementation so coming to the question of maintenance versus downtime so there are three scenarios which comes whenever there is a maintenance or downtime one is unplanned hardware maintenance whenever there is an issue with the hardware in which the services are hosted we call it as unplanned hardware maintenance and the action which will be taken in this scenario will be the live migration of the instances which are running on that hardware to another hardware which is healthy and the second scenario is what we call unexpected downtime this is a scenario when the running virtual machines fails unexpectedly it may it may be hung or some other issues and in this scenario normally the azure auto heal functionality will kick in and it might redeploy the virtual machine or migrate it to another healthy host as well and the third scenario is what we call planned maintenance and these are the events which are scheduled by Microsoft and it is used for periodic updates of Azure services. And since this is planned, no action is normally required. The next important concept is availability set. So availability sets in general is used to ensure high availability of the applications and we might need to host multi-tier application and in each tier we might host multiple VMs to ensure we have high availability at each layer. So in this scenario normally we will create an availability set and we will assign multiple VMs to that availability set so that at least uh, um, half of the VMs in that availability sets will be uh, working fine at a moment. And when we are deploying multi-tier application the general recommendation is that if a service tier say for example a web server layer has a similar functionality we should create a separate availability set for that web server tier and it's a similar case with other uh, layers as well so we might need to create different availability sets for application tier and different availability sets for database tier the reason for this is that Availability set ensures that at least 50% of the VMs will be up during uh, any given instance. And hence, uh, if there are heterogeneous workloads present in the same availability set, there might be chance that uh, one of the functionality VMs might go down and other functionality VMs might be up. So at the end of the day, we won't get 100% availability for the end to end application. So that's why we normally recommend creating an availability set for each and every application tier and all the VMs in a particular availability set should perform same functionality. And since we are deploying multiple VMs inside an availability set, we normally load balance this using either Azure Load Balancer or Application Gateway. And since the number of VMs in an availability sets may vary. The general recommendation is to use managed disk 
so by using manage disk we will ensure that we don't have uh, performance issues with the disk and, and availability scenarios as well and in general uh, availability sets provide an SLA of 99.95% and this uh, this is uh, uh, valid only when we are assigning at least two VMs in an availability set if there is only one VM it's not recommended to use availability set and uh, we can directly use it as single instance VM on an SSD where we can get fixed SLA of 99.9% but if we have single VM in which we have assigned it to an availability set there is no SLA applicable and there is one more additional uh, capability what we call it as availability zones and availability zones normally provides HA within a, a specific region and in this case we will uh, get SLA of 99.99% at time and it depends on the specific region in which we are hosting the service not all the regions support availability zones at the moment and this may change uh, any time uh, going forward so whenever you are trying to deploy a new service please check the region whether it is supporting availability zones otherwise please use availability sets so we have spoken about availability sets and we need to understand how exactly uh, Azure ensures high availability using the availability set that's where the concept of fault domains and update domains comes into picture if you look at the picture in the slide consider uh, we have two set of racks in a data center and each rack is assigned to a specific fault domain and whenever we are creating an availability set Azure make sure that at least two racks are selected and it will equally distribute those VMs between those two racks so if we have let's say six virtual machine in an availability set so first VM will be assigned to rack one and second VM will go to rack two and the third VM go to rack one and fourth VM goes to rack two and similarly for other VMs as well so in this case rack 1 gets 2 VMs and rack 2 gets 2 VMs and the fault domains is what we call a group of resources which share common resources like hardware such as power uh, cooling facility everything will be common uh, for a rack and this is what we call it as fault domains so in case if there is a failure in entire rack the three VMs which was hosted in the rack one goes down but the other three VMs which are uh, running on rack two will be functional and since all the six VMs in an availability set perform same functionality we have three VMs running at any point of time that's how Azure ensures high availability using the availability sets and next concept is what we call update domains and update domains is just a logical segregation in which whenever there is an update from Azure platform it will ensure that it won't break the running functionality all at once we will try to update uh, a set of VMs and if it is successful then it move on to second update domain uh, which is again a different set of VMs and similarly it will move on and in general we will have uh, two fault domains and some regions support three fault domains as well and by default we have five update domains whenever we are creating an availability set and it can be customized up to 20 update domains
and so far we have seen uh, availability set and for HA we might need to add multiple VMs and in this case we have to pre-create those VMs and assign it to availability set but let's say if we have a scenario where we know what application we need to host and we have an image of the application uh, we have automated and we need to spin up multiple VMs based on that VM image in this case we don't really need to pre-create the VMs and we can just uh, spin up the VM based on demand let's say if uh, there is high demand uh, uh, for the resources we can spin up more VMs and if there is low demand we can uh, shut down or delete uh, existing VMs so this is what we call it as scale sets and since we use common image for creation of all the VMs so scale set is ideally used for uh, VMs with common functionality so if it is web server all the VMs will be created with same configuration which we have uh, created uh, from the image and uh, the scaling process either it be a uh, scale out or scale in this can be either manual automated or we can uh, use both manual and automated as well and if you look at the specific implementation details of scale set uh, we uh, need to specify the instance count that is the number of VMs in the scale set we, we can specify any number from uh, 0 to 1000 and we need to specify the instance size of each VM uh, either it be standard DS1 V2 CPU or the larger instance as well and whenever a new VM is created it will create the new VM with the specific instance size and since we are creating large number of VMs uh, say up to 1000 uh, and for tasks like batch processing it will be more economical if we use low priority VMs and there is again uh, a limitation from Azure that uh, by default it won't scale beyond 100 instances this is to ensure that uh, our subscription is not misused uh, but in case if we are very sure that we need scaling beyond 100 instances we just need to enable the settings of scaling beyond 100 instances as true or yes and next concept is what we call auto scale and so far uh, we have just seen uh, creation of set of resources based on fixed size and auto scale helps in flexibility on how we want to create those resources and we can define specific set of rules to adjust those capacity say for example uh, whether we want to use scale out or scale in uh, if the CPU is let's say uh, above a certain threshold we might need to add more instances that's what we call it as scale out scenario and if the CPU of all the VMs falls below a particular threshold then we might need to reduce the number of instances because like we don't want to just run the VM uh, without running any workload that's what we call it as scale in and if we know some of the workloads uh, have uh, a particular time limit say for example in retail scenarios uh, the stores might be opening around morning 10 and it might close until uh, evening 10, 10 pm so in this case we know more load will be during this 10 am to 10 pm window and we can uh, even just uh, schedule uh, uh, our auto scaling functionality to uh, Mention that we want to scale out to 100 instances during uh, the daytime and we can uh, reduce it to let's say very few instances during the night so that's how we can schedule uh, based on timings as well and this certainly helps in reducing the monitoring and it optimizes both performance and cost as well 
and coming to implementation of auto scaling we might need to specify what is the minimum number of uh, vms which we need to run and what are all the maximum number of vms and we need to specify what are the scale out and scale in scenarios as well say for example uh, if we are uh, scaling out based on cpu threshold we might need to specify the threshold let's say 70 percent of the cpu threshold is the limit and if all the vms cross cpu threshold of 75 percent for a particular amount of time say five minutes on average then we need to scale out an vm and we need to specify the number of vms to be scaled out as well so in the example which you see in the slide we specify the vm count increased by one so in this case like once the threshold is breached for five minutes then it will increase uh, the vm by one and in scaling scenarios again we might need to specify what is the cpu threshold which uh, we need to look for and in this case 25 percent so if all the running vms have cpu threshold of less than 25 percentage say for uh, past five minutes then uh, we might need to reduce th the vm by one and we have those cooling period of let's say five minutes to avoid like frequent scale out and scale in scenarios whenever uh, the cpu uh, threshold crosses these limits so that's all in this lesson and in next lesson we are going to look at virtual machine extensions thank you very much